I think something that's also important to really point out when we talk about these types of facilities, as I discuss these issues with my colleagues in other cities, they're specifically building these to bring in tournaments. The danger with that is, is when you come in with that sole focus, you have to ask yourself what happens if the tournaments don't come in down the road. I think where San Angelo is in a much better position when we have this discussion is because this facility was not only built to bring in tournaments, it was also built to provide the services that our local sports leagues need um, in this area. And so if in 15 years we don't have a tournament, we still have the Girls Fast Pitch Softball Association playing softball at the location. We still have Southern Little League playing there and so the facility can be used. And so when we look at this project, we can say that it fits more than, it, it serves more than one purpose. And when we compare ourselves to some of these other communities, I think we've been more financially prudent in looking at these projects. Um, we can look at the Coliseum and the Convention Center. I'm not going to go into a lot of details, but what I can just say about the Convention Center is when you look at the number of rentals today versus what we had in the last full years of service, um, we had 59 roughly. Um, the last full year of service at the Convention Center, we've had over 200 in the first full year of service um, since it's been completed. It has been a tremendous asset to our organization and the community, and actually what we're finding is that it's hard to schedule that facility. Um, sometimes we want to have meetings there, and we, we just can't get in as, as staff just because of the usage, and so that's really performed um, better than expected in a lot of ways. Um, a relatively, uh, the Fort Concho project, we've completed that, and, and most of you have probably seen that in attending some of the public events at the location. A project that we just completed within the last month was the Tennis Center, and we're really looking forward to see what um, the Tennis Center has to offer for our community. And like the sports complex, we do think that it's going to have a very positive impact. Um, and, and I was amazed about to see the number of kids that were there um, at the opening and I can just say that that's going to be a significant that is another significant improvement for our community. What do we have in development? Well we still have the Contro River improvements in development and we have um, allocated four and a half million for that and, and a lot of people are saying well you haven't done anything to the river. We've actually done a lot to the river unfortunately you can't see it. Um, <laughs> The dredging was a significant component of the river project and we have actually completed that. Um, we are creating the construction documents and we have hired a con contract manager at risk for that project. So we are moving forward. Um, but what I can say is that the funds utilized on that project have gone to good use um, when we talk about the dredging. I was amazed when I went out to the dredging ponds to see what was coming out of that river. Um, and if you didn't have a chance to see that, um, it was something where it was just a sheer thick mud coming out at that location and um, I think it is, uh, we are lucky that we did it at this time because the problem could be much worse over time. Long term water supply, I think the mayor um, did a, a great job in talking about that. I'm going to address that um, later on in the presentation. Currently we have fifteen and a half million dollars appropriated for that project. The extension of the sales tax would add an additional ten million dollars of funding to long term water supply. 50th Street expansion, we're actually finished with the design phase on that. We're just having to go through some property acquisitions that have been somewhat problematic for us. And then the aquatics facility, we have selected the design firm. So when you look at all of these projects, these are all projects that you voted on um, within five years. Um, we have finished the majority of those projects and we have um, a couple left, but um, we've made a significant progress in moving, toward, moving forward with these projects. A lot of people ask us, well, why the hickory? I think one of the things that's very important for us to talk about when we look at our long-term water supply is the fact that the existing sources of water are all surface water. And more importantly, when you look at a lot of these, the primary issue was flood control versus uh, a water source. And when we um, look at the situation and the drought of record that we've been in and what occurred at Twin Buttes, um, during the height of that drought, we virtually did not, we, well, we had a couple of small ponds. Um, it was almost completely dry. And so we really need to look at diversifying our water por portfolio um, as we continue moving forward. Um, we're also seeing a reduction in ivy water. And what you can see in this, um, in this slide is that you can see the, the various um, surface water sources that we have. But on the bottom, I want to draw your attention to the 
the acre feet that we have allocated. Those are being reduced as we speak because of the drought of record. Um, in addition, we own the water rights and they've been litigated. It's not a process that we have to go through. And as you look around the state of Texas and what people are going through when they purchase those water rights, you're almost assured that some type of litigation will go along with the process. This is also gonna be the basis of a regional concept. When we look at water, this is a discussion that the mayor and I've had on a number of occasions and that we've had with Representative Darby in the sense that we really need to position ourselves as a, a significant player in, 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 as we look to the future of regional water in the state of Texas. What we have to the east of us is we have the Lower Colorado River Authority. What we have to the west of us is a CRMWD and there is a void that's really sort of, that exists in this area. And I think it's important that um, as a community we step in to fill that void and work with the other communities in the area to develop long range water supplies, not only for San Angelo, but for this area of Texas. And the mayor adequately talked about the financing structures. This is what it's gonna look like when the project is developed. Um, we're going to have 6 million gallons a day um, in the initial phase, then we'll move to 9 million gallons a day, and then we'll move to 10.7 million gallons a day of water. This is actually the route of the pipeline that we have been talking about. There was a lot of discussion about utilizing the Ivy line and, and lines associated with Miller's View Duel. Um, I actually had a lot of slides in here that said why we chose this, this route. Um, Beyond it being the most direct route, when we ran the financial analysis on that project, we really found that when you looked at the life of the project, it was more cost effective to go directly into San Angelo, even though the pipe costs were going to be more expensive simply because um, you can take advantage of gravity and you only have to pump it uphill once versus um, having a number of pumps in the other system. So how much does it cost? Uh, this is the estimate that we've been provided by the engineers. What we can tell you is one of the things that we're really working and, and trying to chase is the reduction that we're seeing in a lot of construction cost as we speak. One of the numbers that you may have heard that we've talked to council about in, in, in the budget discussions and as we've looked at long-term water supply is $100 million. We think if we can push the project um, with um, controlled aggression, that there should be at least a $20 million savings that we could see as a result of those construction savings. What we have to be careful of is that what we're hearing from the market is that that's probably going to start diminishing as we move into 2011. So that's something that we're looking at um, as part of the project. And you can see that this project is in three phases. Um, this underground water source, I cannot stress how important it is to the future of this community. In the end, when we talk about all of the different aspects of economic development and what we're doing as an organization. Water's life, and if you don't have water, then you can put money into all of the other activities. You can, but you're still gonna have to battle that. Our counterparts in the Western states are facing that issue today. And so one of the most, one, the key element in economic development is long-term water supply. And the Hickory is a significant part of that. A quick update on capital projects. One of the things that we've talked to you in previous State of the City addresses is the fact that we need a capital improvement program and that we were playing catch up and that we were facing a perfect storm of facilities that have essentially um, deteriorated to the point that in some cases we're not able to utilize those um, to date. And, and I kind of want to put this in perspective. We started talking about this um, in 2006, the discussion really started picking um, up, the pace was picked up very quickly as a result of the 2006 um, issue that we had in the water main break. Since the implementation of those projects, we have completed $46 million of capital improvement projects. And you can see $16 million at the airport. I think we have to really point out those are a, a lot of federal funds that um, our state and federal representatives have worked hard on getting into our community, as well as our airport director. Um, engineering, $5 million in streets. Um, public safety, $5.6 million. Uh, we had to replace our radio system, but we also have one fire station that is, um, and you can see this in the total amount, one fire station that's been remodeled to accommodate the increase of one ambulance, and we're reconstructing two fire stations in that process. Water, $13 million. Wastewater, 6 million. Um, 
but we're really happy in the, pay, the progress that we're making and the pace that we're keeping in these projects. We've completed $46 million worth of projects. We have $54 million worth of projects in progress. And as you can see, we have $134 million that we haven't started. Largest one um, is obviously the Hickory water supply. I think it's also important to point out, and, and I'm going to be really careful when I say this, we did all of this, and when the council raised the rates, there was a lot of concern about how we were going to do this and what we were going to use the money for. Um, I, I can say with confidence that we've used the money for, for uh, the exact reasons that we indicated in our presentations. At the same time, when you look at the expenditures of these funds, the council was also able to reduce the tax rate at the same point by five cents. And a lot of folks will say, well, but the valuation still went up. I think it's important to say that there was a cost avoidance that we really went through in this and we're still able to bring these capital projects to completion. You can see that there is a map of the projects. This is being updated as we speak. It's going to change because the projects are continuing to come on board. This is just to give you a quick visual. Downtown master developer, uh, the mayor talked about this and, and uh, I think we really have to point out that what we're trying to do is bring together a lot of groups that are working on this um, so that we can move forward in a clear um, direction and, and take everybody's interest into account. Uh, it had, downtown has the highest concentration of employment opportunities when you look at the city as a whole and it can serve as an incubator for small businesses. Um, it represents a major infrastructure investment that we've already made. If we're able to utilize existing infrastructure versus having to put that uh, infrastructure in in other areas, that results in a cost savings for the organization. It also impacts the um, property values of the surrounding residential neighborhoods. And one of the phrases that's consistent with my colleagues is, as the downtown goes, so goes the city. And I think um, it's important to say that it is an indicator of economic viability. And in the end, it's the birthplace of our community. And, and so we think that that's going to be a major project that will really work to benefit the community. As we look at the river project on the south side moving this way, we take into account the master developer and the work that we're doing on City Hall Plaza. What we have been talking about is moving in from both sides to really make improvements um, to downtown. Um, and, and, and utilize it in the way that it needs to be utilized and that it is an asset for our community. Conceptual re renderings, this is part of the river project. This is really a mixed-use development, a public-private partnership. Um, this is something that uh, our staff has done in terms of looking at a planned development district and how we can approach that situation. And then there is another conceptual rendering that, that gives you a sense of what we're trying to accomplish when we look at the downtown master developer. <clears throat> 